Hello, welcome to Making Creativity Pay. With the Edinburgh Fringe in full swing, I spoke to a number of performers about the marketing and promotional aspects of the Fringe. Thanks very much for coming on the podcast. Can you tell us who you are and a little bit about the show? I'm Eleanor Basil Smith, and I'm the producer of Cowboys and Lesbians coming to the Edinburgh Fringe for all of August at Pleasant Stone. The show is a queer rom com. It's very camp, it's very fun. It kind of combines a fruity parody coming of age film set on a ranch in the US and kind of Russian dolls that inside. Lovely love story starring two sarcastic British teenagers in London. So, a bit of something for everyone. Have you performed at the Edinburgh Fringe before, or is this your first time? What kind of things are you looking forward to most? My first time at the Fringe, it's also the writer and director of the show, Billy Esplin's first time at the Fringe, but both of our actors, Georgia Vivian and Julia Pilkington, are Fringe stalwarts. They've been here quite a few years and always had a lovely time. We're very excited, uh, myself and Billy. Um, I think we're most excited, to be honest, I really have never been at all, not even just as a punter. So I'm most excited to see loads of shows and kind of see the real kind of breadth of what a show can be at the Fringe and in general, because I feel like when you're just kind of seeing what's on at London, it can become a bit formulaic. So yeah, I'm really excited to see all the amazing stuff that's on. When it comes to flyering, what's your strategy? Do you spray and pray or are you a bit more targeted? I, as I just said, I have never done the Fringe. I have never done flyering. So I can't pretend to have any wisdom, particularly on the matter. But I think our plan is we're going to, fly it for at least two hours before our show every day and really kind of I think less spray and pray (laughs) and more laser like focus want to have some nice chats with some nice queer people I think um we're gonna we've I think we've got some advice about where to go in the city I think some of the places are more comedy focused the Royal Mile can get it quite intense I've heard I've heard so yeah I think we'll try and go some theatre places near our show, which is in the Pleasance Dome, and around other queer shows and around other queer kind of areas, because our show is obviously, as the title suggests, Cowboys and Lesbians, um, very queer, very fun. So I think that will be our kind of process so far, but I'm sure I'll have much to say later on in the month. When it comes to promotion on social media, what kind of things do you tend to use? Are you all over everything or do you particularly use a particular platform? Yes, we are all over the socials. Our show is about teenagers, as I said. So it's kind of about two British school friends in their final year of school, kind of realising that they have haven't had the kind of classic teenage experiences that the films always tell us we're supposed to have. You know, things like first kisses, but also... Any kind of drama, really, they're very sensible and, you know, they just kind of drink tea and chat and things. And so it's about teenagers. It's not for teenagers because, you know, we obviously want it to be accessible for everyone, but we want as many young young queer people to see it as possible. So a big priority for us has been socials. I myself, you know, like a bit of Instagram, but I'm not a massive socials person. So I really had to like delve into the world of Twitter and TikTok because I know TikTok is very important for the fringe and we're doing our best. We hope we're doing well. Um, but I think for, for a show for young people, I do think it's one of the most important things right now. It's definitely where I, you know, and at Instagram story adverts is a lot where I see recommendations for shows and, and gallery exhibitions and things like that. So I'd imagine it's for lots of, lots of other young people these days. So for the venue you're performing at was there anything in particular that drove the decision to go there well i mean so as i said although myself and billy the writer and director haven't put on a show before our actors julia and georgia have been here a lot in other shows and they just told us that pleasance was and especially pleasant stone was a really lovely place to be for theater and a really good venue and it, it the the space that you know we had access to in pleasance was a really perfect for adapting our show which first came to fruition in a very small kind of 50 person seater venue in london called the white bear which is above a pub and so billy wrote it for the space itself so it was really important to have a space that translated well and didn't have to involve too much change for the for the script and the pleasant team have just been absolutely lovely from start to finish so we're very pleased with our choice and in terms of ticketing I, we're very inexperienced so well, not inexperienced, but in terms of the fringe. So we just went along with what Pleasance kind of suggested and we've been happy with it so far. We added a few kind of, we decreased the concession prices in a few places because we wanted to make it as accessible as possible. But I, I think there are 
people that are cheaper than us and people that are more expensive than us. And we've just kind of, as our first shot, gone with this. When it comes to looking at progress, how relaxed are you in terms of ticket sales? Do you refresh it every 10 minutes or are you fairly relaxed about how things go? I'm very relaxed (laughs) about ticket sales. I'm not necessarily relaxed in general, kind of, I feel like I'm more stressed as a whole about the run. I'd really love it to be a great run, but in terms of the day-to-day ticket sales, the fact that we've got any at this stage is really thrilling because we're a new company, we're a new show, we haven't got an enormous kind of marketing and PR budget. So the fact that some people are booking just from kind of our Twitter and it being shared around is is so heartening. And I've heard from experienced fringe people that flyering and kind of getting people in on the day is where where the, the sales kind of really go up. So I'm hoping that's how it's going to go. So no, I haven't, I've kind of been checking intermittently and liking the fact that the numbers are vaguely going up, but I haven't been stressing out every single day. Maybe I will as the month goes on, maybe that'll change. But for now, I feel like we got to take each day as a new day and a new show and a new ticket sale report. <laughs> Are there any particular shows you're looking forward to see or any posters or promotions you've seen? I've got to see that. We have seen so many shows that we'd absolutely love to see. We're really focused on queer shows because, you know, we just think they're really important. 52 Monologues for Young Transsexuals looks incredible. We're so excited for that. There's a musical, a queer musical called Sing River from Love Song Productions, which just looks absolutely beautiful. There's Character Floor, which is about, I think it's a one woman show, ADHD, queer. That looks really amazing. Dazzling Theatre bringing a one woman show. Show that looks lovely. Buff the play. I'm so intrigued by. I saw it in the newspaper and a few, yeah, a few others. Das Weben looks really, really interesting. Pitch, which is about queer football, looks great. Meet Cutes by BB Lucille. I mean, too many to see. I think I am a sucker for a good poster. I'm very visual, and so yeah, I've got there's some great posters along that along that bunch. I also really like a terrible show for terrible people's poster. Yeah. Thanks very much for taking part. Have a great fringe. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this, check out our other episodes where we speak to a number of performers about their experiences at the Edinburgh Fringe, as well as with creatives in other industries about making creativity pay.